women. Why are you so addicting? Why? All right, I'm not really addicted to ramen, but there are days when I am seriously craving one of these. Yummy to my tummy. But you know what I found out the hard way? This is full of sh Let me explain. Made my ramen, and I realized there's a lot of things in there that I have no idea what it is. I took a pen and just started underlining all the stuff that I didn't know. I told myself, I'm going to look it up to see what I'm putting inside my body and what this company is doing to my health. So behold, things that are inside your ramen. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, so forgive me if I pronounce it and butcher the word completely. I'm no scientist, so heh. <laughs> Number one. Thiamine mononitrate. Mon mononitrate. My my I don't know that it's pretty much the synthetic form of vitamin B1. But the only difference is vitamin B1 is actually water soluble. Thiamine mononitrate is not. Thiamine mononitrate is actually fat soluble, which means your body is actually gonna accumulate it into your liver and into your fatty tissues. So what does that mean? Ultimately it means you get boom! Number two, cellulose. Cellulose is basically plant fiber. And one of the most common sources is wood pulp. Manufacturers grind up the wood and extract the cellulose. It's odd to imagine that the same kind of pulp that's used to make paper is actually in our food. What? Number three, dextrose. It's commonly used in packaged and processed foods mainly because it's cheap and it's widely available. Kind of like... But this is what extends their shelf life. Number four, Disodium guanilati, Disodium guanilate, Disodium guanilate. It's a flavor enhancer that makes your foods salty and more savory. And legally, these terms can actually be hidden, such as like spices, yeast, Hydrolyzed baby dee 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 dee. Don't fall for it. It's actually just bad. It's just another form of fake stuff. As if one flavor enhancer was not enough, they also added disodium inosinate. Sodium inosinate. <sighs> Anyways, they use this in synergy with MSG. We all know MSG definitely makes food taste better, but it's not good for you. And it's not short for message, it's short for more shitty gunk. And as if two flavor enhancers is not enough, there's also malic acid. Malic acid is a flavor enhancer for drinks and candies, Diet Coke. It's really good at masking unnatural flavors. So that's why you probably think all these diet foods are like, oh hey, surprisingly it's not as bad. It's the malic acid. Number seven. I found out that maltodextrin is worse than sugar. They get into your bloodstream fast. And if there is no real purpose, pretty much all of that stuff gets stored as fat. And you know what the ugly truth is? Maltodextrin is used by a lot of diet companies in their foods, their shakes, their bars, their drinks. Lucky for them, they don't have to label it as sugar. So they're just like, got him. Keep an eye out for maltodextrin. Potassium carbonate. It's a white powder used to make soap, glass, and other stuff like fire extinguishers. <laughs> you can legit get poisoning from inhaling or eating this potassium carbonate. Sand glands concentrate. It's actually a fish. Have you guys ever heard of a fish called sand glands? I googled a picture of a sand glands and it pretty much looks like an anchovy. They're cute. You would think whatever it's fish, it's all natural, but I actually dug a little deeper and I saw that there were studies that showed that they have a high level of PSP in them, which stands for paralytic shellfish poisoning, mostly from what they're eating. So their diet is poisoning them and then we're eating the fish and then we're getting poisoned and blah! The last ingredient would be sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate. It's a household chemical with a variety of uses. Its chemical formula is very similar to baking soda. So I guess you can say we're consuming baking soda, right? No, because baking soda is non-toxic chemicals. Sodium carbonate is just toxic. So these are the 10 ingredients that I found in 
and what I have been consuming on a pretty regular basis. And you know what? That's kind of scary, isn't it? Because there's a lot of stuff that we probably eat and we're not even aware of what we're consuming. Why? We should know what we're eating. It was interesting to see what people will put, what companies will allow and put into their foods for whatever reason they have. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about ramen. At least the processed ones and the unhealthy ones. We all know it's unhealthy when we just can't stop eating them. That's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!